Alrighty. Lol. Those who are watching the stream can see that we have our lovely new character sheets, totally original, not stolen from any previously actual play show that is out on the internet. You see any coincidence? It's entirely coincidence. There's other D&D shows, what? Yeah, no, this is the only D&D show, D &D show on the internet. There isn't another <laughs> one. Never. All right, now for the quick recap, because it has been a couple weeks. Um, the party's magical toaster that floats is kidnapped. We all mourn the loss, but we will find him. And we will kill those probably who took him, if I know this party well enough. Um, so in response, in a clear-headed, truly rational and logically thinking, sane mind, the group decided to steal the magical Bluetooth speaker to God, that is the Oracle. While, con while they did contemplate murdering the Bluetooth speaker, they decided to kidnap instead. They absconded with the Oracle, well... Oracle, Return, returned to the stolen ship, which still has no name, and uh, hightailed it the fuck out of Dodge. We left off with them taking off into the ocean, not knowing where they're going. I don't fucking know. <laughs> and um, it is late at night, so I'm under the presumption we will find the party getting ready for bed, save Elric, who is getting ready to do his first watch of the evening. Uh, were any of the others planning on staying up later, or were you three going to go straight to sleep? Hyacinth is going to go into the uh, the mess hall area, mm -hmm. and they are going to separate out all of the nonsense they've been collecting lately. Okay. Uh, I think I gave you a number last session of a gill number. uh i you did give me a number but i admit i think i forgot to write it down okay but that's not surprising um, given that you know i think you said it to me as we ended i believe it was about a thousand gill is yeah. what that does sound about up, right I, yeah so it was a thousand gill so basically hyacinth is going to split a thousand gill six ways okay Whatever that number is, it's like a it's like a hundred and one fifty something, I think. One thousand divided by six is one sixty six point six. <laughs> yeah, so it's gonna just be one sixty six for everyone, in okay. different pouches, and they are going to stick Dell's cut of that into Dell's stuff. Yep. Um, they're gonna also pull out just the other randomness they have acquired. Okay. Which is mainly. A really strange sword that's bigger than they care to deal with because it was in their their arrow pouch. It was. They're gonna sit that on the table, organize their arrows. Just so high. Double check. Just so high. Since where, as she takes the sword out of the uh, quiver and all, um, she really quickly roll Constitution. Uh, eighteen. Okay. It doesn't harm you, but your hands do feel that icy chill coming off the uh, scabbard as you take it all out and lay it down. And uh, when, you look at, when you look at your hands, <laughs> you see tiny ice crystals forming on your palms but that they melt away right away. They're going to look between their hand and the sword and then push the sword further away with an arrow. <laughs> okay. Go back to taking inventory of their arrows, and then just leave the sword on the on the mess hall table and go to bed and go spend some time with the orb. Alrighty. Uh, I sense is gonna read the orb a bedtime story. God, <laughs> I'm not gonna even ask what story. I don't need to know. The orb it, the orb isn't preferential to bedtime stories. <laughs> um, DFA, what are you? Are, is DFA heading right to bed or are they staying up late? She's probably going straight to bed. She's an early riser. That's fair. Okay. Uh, Mogzio, do you have any late night plans now that you've returned to your stolen ship, or are you going to bed too after the craziness? Uh, I think Mogzio's going to bed as well. Okay. The Moogles have returned, retired for the night, and so is the bunny. Elric, however, because it is your job on the ship to be 
the watch during the evenings as you do not need to get a full night's sleep to get the same rest as the others. You are currently walking among the deck, as your job would entail. Mm-hmm. Um, the only people that you see at the moment are 83N with Rowan at the helm, keeping the ship going wherever <laughs> it is that you guys decided to go. And um, sitting at the fuck, I think it's the it's the word for the front of the boat. Um, helm, isn't it? No, helm. Oh, no, no, the, the helm's helm. the where they. That's that, yes, that's, the, that's the that's the wheel. Uh, the, bow. the bow. Yes, bow. the bow. Thank you. I, I don't know boats. I don't. I, I don't know boats. Um, <laughs> sitting at the bow, looking out past the masthead, is the quote unquote oracle, staring out the ocean. She's kind of kept to herself. Uh, Victoria was kind enough to provide her with a cloak to keep her warm once you guys arrived. That Hyacinth could take hers back. Take theirs back. Um, so yeah, she is just quietly watching out at sea as the ship heads out into the night. What would you like to do during your watch? Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> guess uh, go up to the Oracle. Okay. A quote unquote oracle. Yes. Gotta put the quotes. And uh ask, like, are are you not going to bed? You startle her a bit. Which is funny given that your armor deprives you of stealth in most situations. <laughs> uh huh. But she was deep in thought, so you stop you talking pulled her out of it. Um she looks over and goes, uh, sorry, I'm being absconded with by you guys kind of Interrupted my normal sleep schedule. I'll get there eventually. Why aren't you sleeping? Oh, I'm I'm the night's watch. The first watch. Ah. Makes sense. You I remember right, your your people don't need to sleep as much as uh, the rest of us. What do you mean your people? No, I'm kidding. Uh she jumps in, dead. grabs you by the shirt, says, Shut the fuck up, you little bitch. Stop being a victim. No, kidding. That's uh you you would be correct, yes. Mm. You're the, um, forgive me if this is personal, you're the one who, uh, your mother was the one who dealt with Adamar, right? Correct. Nah. Heard a lot about you. Oh? Gail likes to talk. Hopefully, uh, I annoyed him enough. Oh, this is before you even became in the picture. He t- talked about your family a lot. Ah, uh, did he? I'm what assume- would he say? Roll, roll charisma. See if she actually feels like sharing. Uh, fifty plus five. That's twenty. Oh, fuck you. Um, she shrugs. And goes mostly how much of a problem your mother was for his boss. Um, talking about how he always felt like he played second fiddle to Adamar's attention because your mother took up so much of it. He hoped that by getting rid of uh, some other bird... Your your mom had bird friends. I don't get it, but whatever. Gail thought if he got rid of her, Adamar would like him again. Ah. So, this was all just to get out of Adamar's... uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Like, not affection, but like, favor? Yeah. Partially, I think. If if I had to guess. Your aunt, I'm assuming, that's how I overheard it. She was a problem for the group. But Gail took it more personally, I think, because you've met him. Yeah, unfortunately. There's a pause. For what it's worth, I am sorry about your mother. As appreciated, thank you. She pulls back the hood on her cloak and just stares at you for a minute. And, uh, let's see. I think. Oh, she does. Okay. She uh, starts rubbing her hands together like if you're cold kind of thing. Mm. Looks at you goes, uh, forgive me if I'm too forward, but, um, 
I know I can't undo what happened, but would it be all right if I gave you hopefully a gift so that you can have a better idea what to do moving forward? I would welcome such a gift, yes. Promise you won't freak out when I do this. Alex, and I kind of look like with raised eyebrows, like, hmm, weird. Sure. I have to preface with that because gestures to like the open air goes, you know how people are when they're not used to things. They're prone to do the freak out thing, right? You've seen it. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're clear. Don't do the freak out thing, no matter what. Just trust me. I, I, I know what I'm doing. <clears throat> While I may be a fake oracle, this is not fake. Fair enough. Had to get that out of the way. All right. Um, she steps away from the bow, more towards like... She's still in the front of the ship, but she's more in the middle and near the edge. And she starts, like, moving her hands in a very, uh, almost like she's pulling something out of the air t towards, like, a center. And as she do it, you start to hear, like, uh, a faint whispery sound on the air. Mm. And it starts subtly at first. But it gets, starts getting louder and louder as she does it. Do you have knowledge, Arcana? I do not believe I do. Nope. Do, do you have nature? Nope. You have I only have, you have, I have religion, roll, nobility. If you would like, roll a nature, mean a knowledge religion. Then. It's a 19. Oh, okay. It takes you a minute because, again, you're not sure what to expect. But once you start hearing and then start to see what comes next, you are able to figure out what this is. Um... After the sound becomes very hard to ignore, it's echoing everywhere, you start seeing iridescent orbs start fading into... They look like little balls of iridescent energy with wispy tails, and they are gathering around two of you and sw like swimming through the air like a school of fish. Oh. This continues for a, a while. Until she slams her hands together and all that energy that she's collected spreads out around you got around the entire ship. And now that iridescent glow has consumed all of your vision around the ship. Um, with that, you realize you are now surrounded by pyreflies. Pyreflies? Yes, pyreflies. Okay. Because you've rolled high on the religion check, you know these things are associated with the dead. Oh. And specifically, <clears throat> the far plane. <clears throat> Finally able to relax a bit, she looks to you and goes, this is going to sound weird, but I want you to call to your mother. Not literally, but if you want, use your heart to invoke memories of her and call her. Interesting. All right, so I guess Elric's gonna close his eyes and do just that. Okay. Um. High or low? Mm, high. Describe for everyone what Elric's mother looks like. Uh. Or how he remembers her. How he remembers her. Let's see. Um, she 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 was the Elvon of the two of my parents. Uh, let's see. Uh, pretty like basically really beautiful elf woman with uh, raven black hair, which is why she was called the Raven, and. Uh, the same dark uh, purple eyes that I have. All right. From the pyreflies, I kind of coalesce in front of you. 
taking the shape of your mother. Hovering maybe a foot above the ground. Just looking down at you. Um, the Oracle. Those, I know this can be painful, but given what you want to go after, Adamar and all, I want you to see the face of the woman who made you who you are. So you remember. She made you, not him. No matter what you decide to do, remember her and don't let him spoil what she means. How is this possible? My sister is the speaker or listener. We can actually hear the God. She was meant to be the oracle. This is my calling. I can create pockets of the far plane. And those who are dearly departed, if called on, can be, as you can see, for a short period of time. As you can tell, it's not actually her. It's your memory of her made manifest. Ah. Uh, you see, I have uh, some tears in his eyes. I was hoping I could speak to her one last time. This will last for about 10 minutes. So if you want, I can leave you two alone. I think you said it's not really her. <laughs> well, no, it's not her as in like, you can't call actual spirits. Uh -huh. But this is like as close as you can get if you want to give like closure. Mm -hmm. So she's offering you that chance to talk to her just to let out what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. If you would like it. Okay. I guess, you know, th through the tears, he's just going to kind of say that he was sorry they sorry that he wasn't there or like he wasn't able to he was there he wasn't able to do anything that he wasn't strong enough was there anything else or is that just all he wanted to say to her um Because again, she said it can last 10 minutes, so you have like, <laughs> you, you have time to be like, so I met this well, girl. That's definitely the closure thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess he's going to tell her that, you know, the regard, like, even with what happened, um, his sister, Alex's sister and, and father are doing okay. Uh, and then he ran into the Robin, and uh, she's exactly as you remember. And uh, just so wonder... you know, while, while you're talking to her, the image of her is smiling, she does look like she's reacting to you, mm -hmm. which may help you or not, but she it doesn't look like she's just a static image. Yeah. But whenever you are done, she will end the um, connection. Huh. So whenever you um, are ready, you can tell her. I get, yeah, I guess that's it. Okay. He's ready. She uh, waves her hands in the air a few times, and then slowly the image fades. The last part of her that you see is her smiling face one more time. In a very, very... Barely audible whisper you hear is, I'm proud of you. Mm. And then all the fireflies fade back into nothing. Like, you don't see them anymore. And with that, she goes, by the way, um, my name is Selena. Well, Selena, thank you for that. And while you might not be the oracle, you certainly have a gift at least someone thinks so it's good to know someone appreciates it uh is it is it cold what you said it's cold is it cold well she she was when you guys took her she was kind of wearing her night clothing uh elric's jacket you know you like give it her oh he's she's got a cloak on to stay warm well i mean she's still cold give her a jacket too 
I mean, if, if you offer it, um, she'll look at you and just put her hand up saying, no, I'm actually going to go down to um, my sleeping. <laughs> All right, your your medic, Vic, uh, Victoria, gave me a room for the night. That's good. Um, also, this is probably weird. Um, you guys visit, visited Gale, yes? Yes, we did. Did you happen to... Fu- you know what? It's late. Um, we'll talk about it later. And she says, remind me in the morning. We'll talk about them. Then she just walks off. Okay. Was there anything else you wanted to do before you went to sleep uh, at the end of your shift? No, about okay. it. Um, so just to do a quick actual, like, your watch job, give me a quick uh, perception or either or su- that or survival. <coughs> Perception or survival? Whichever you feel stronger with. Uh, they're they're evenly matched. <laughs> I know. That's uh, 14. Okay. Um, you don't see anything out at sea. It's a very calm night. Uh, the worst you deal with is 83N trying to give you some riddles and jokes to pass the time. One of them being... So, so, Alec, got a good one. Rowan hated it, but I think you'll love it. Okay, so, got three doors in front of you. One of them's got a spike trap. The other one's got two lines that have been fed in a week, and the other one is safety. Which door do you t- pick? In safety, obviously. See, that's the trick question. Technically, the line is the best answer, because if they haven't been fed in weeks, they should be dead. And you hear Rowan, you just hear Rowan groan. He's trying so hard. <laughs> He's trying. He's gonna, Hark's just gonna give out like a fake laugh. <laughs> you can tell Rowan's getting really sick of 83 and trying to be funny. <laughs> He's trying. Poor guy. But he does look at you and goes, if anything happens, we'll give you a holla. And he wishes you sweet dreams. All right. Okay, so everyone gets a long rest. You all wake up refreshed. Uh, DFA, you wake up. Because I'm that kind of asshole. Do, do, do. Ooh, DFA, you wake up to Egamedes sitting on your chest and quaying in your face. Like She's a- going to kiss him on his beak and then set him to the side and get up. Just like a cat. <laughs> As DFA is an early riser, what is her morning routine going to be on this day? She's going to go up to the top deck and everything, realize she's on a ship, and run back down into the room. Oh, that's a good response. Okay. <laughs> is there anything you wish to do in your room? Nope. Okay. Um, Mogzio, are you sleeping in or are you getting up early? Uh, I'll probably sleep in until breakfast is ready. All right. Uh, Hyacinth, are you sleeping in or are you getting up early? Happily getting up early. Okay. What? Are, well, how are you spending your early morning? We'll presume that as you woke up, you see DFA going up. Three seconds goes by before back in the room as like the revelation occurred to her where she was. Oh, well, that's fun. Uh, Hyacinth will first go to. They're going to consider going to check on DFA. Okay. Just because of the bolting across the deck and then back into the room. The design, mm, I don't want to deal with that right now. I'll let Mogzio deal with that. He's the captain of the ship. So they are going to instead go to uh, the mess hall and get themselves breakfast and then take Corey breakfast since Corey was obviously preoccupied last night. Yes. For the record, the sword is exactly where you left it. They're just, they're going to ignore it. It it tried to freeze their hand. They're not happy with it. <laughs> um, 
you do get breakfast. Um, uh-huh. There is a quite the you would expect selection, but what you weren't expecting though was Mont Blanc in the mess preparing the meal. This is the second time you've huh. seen a mogul chef, but you're just getting to the point where it's like, oh god, Mont Blanc, you are a very strange fellow. For every he just says everything. <laughs> he, he he really does. Um, what he prepared. You would akin in your travels to a five star restaurant quality meal. Mm-hmm. Like he, this guy went all the way out to even include presentation for what limited supplies he had. Um, even as going far as to give strangely very French sounding names to all the meals, and I'm not going to come up with French sounding meal names. You can just pick them in your head. That's fine. Um, but he serves you very, very theatrically and says. Um, if you ever want more, you know that the kitchen is open until noon, then you're on your own. But you do you are able to take some to Corey as well, who mm-hmm. takes it and for the most part says she just needs some time alone before, you know, rejoining everybody else. I more than happy to give her that time alone. And Hyacinth is going to go on deck. Because they also left the orb in their their room, tucked into the bed. Okay. Um, they're going to take their bow and all of the things needed to basically restring it and do basics on it, and just set up shop on uh, in on the main deck and out of the way, just keeping an eye on things and observing everyone while they restring their bow. Okay. Because they haven't done it in a while, and they already took inventory of all the arrows that they had sounds like a plan we'll say while you're doing that time passes enough that elric mogs you both wake up and i'm assuming dfa is remaining in the room as long as she can yes okay um mogs as you come out eventually rowan greets you and says hmm captain you never did say where we were heading when we left in a hurry last night did you happen to have any ideas now that you've had time to rest? Um, I'm trying to think. I like out of character. Like, mm-hmm. this is our main thing. Was meeting Gale here, yeah. So yeah, once you, I mean, we go back. You've to... you've met Gale. The island's done. This is where you guys kind of can decide what you want to do with what you got. I feel like, I mean, I'd want to talk to everyone about it, but um, I would guess that now would be an okay time to head back to our little hideout. Ah, uh, to see then? Sure. Mm, okay, very good, Captain. Uh, if you happen to change your mind, just let us know. You see okay. him turn around and just nudge 83 and be like, you heard the Captain. Get the shots ready. We want to be hasty and not take too much time out at sea again. Last thing we want to deal with is another cold reception like before. In A3 and just slaps his forehead in a salute and goes, I, I, and he runs to get some, get some charts. Elric, you've been well rested and all that. How do you find the morning? Uh, interesting, considering... <laughs> The last night he the night he had as i'm saying like how does the morning find him <laughs> does this morning find him well as an email uh yes <laughs> very well that's good it's probably seems like he has a renewed spirit that's good um are you doing anything to contain it or are you just kind of like bouncing with it just you know it's, it's kind of smiling like he's not normally a, a morning person but for Today, for some reason, he seems more. Oh, okay. So it is. It, it is more noticeable than not. Okay. No. Um, are you going to the top deck first? Or are you getting breakfast? Breakfast. Okay. Um, as you enter the mess hall, please roll a perception. That's a three. <laughs> you are not prepared <laughs> for Mont Blanc to scare the living shit out of you. Ah. <laughs> Just. Bursting to your line of vision with like food going, what can I do you for? What do you want? What, what, what are you hungry for? Oh, Jesus. Um, Jesus? Who, who, who's Jesus? 
yeah, I guess Jesus isn't really. <laughs> uh, what would you say in this world? Great googly moogly. Great googly moogly. Great king mog. Great king, Great mog. king mog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great king mog. Holy. Uh, yeah, snuck up on me there. Maybe you just weren't paying enough attention. Yeah, I'm a little distracted. Um, yes, yeah, I'm here for some breakfast. Well then, you're just in time. As he moves, you can see like he's made a spread on one of the tables of all the food that he's prepared. Oh. And as I described, it's a bit of everything. Anything you could think of for breakfast, he has made within reason. Nice. And surprisingly, it's somehow all maintaining that freshly made like temperature. None of it's too warm or too cold. It's just perfect away. And since you rolled low perception, you're not gonna you're not gonna know how he did it. <laughs> Could be magic. Could be Maybelline. You don't know. Maybe it's Maybelline. Um, but yeah, you do <clears throat> get to pick take your pick of breakfast. Um, and as cool. you're taking stuff, he goes, Oh, by the way, watch out for that uh that sword there on the table. It's uh it's weirdly cold. Uh, do I am looking at the sword? <laughs> it, there is a long sword on the table in its scabbard. It's about mm. a one and a half long sword, like a bastard sword. <coughs> and um, <clears throat> it's just sitting on the table. Yeah. Oddly cold, you say? Yes. Uh, yeah, I tried to move it. My hand touched the, the scabbard and ugh, like I was putting my hand in snow. Would Elric have any idea what that is? He can roll... They only have religion, nobility, and he something could, else. He can roll intelligence. Okay. To see if he has like an idea why it's cold. That's a straight flat roll. I got a nat 20. Hell yeah. Fuck you. Wait, a, a nat 20 or a dirty 20? No, nat 20. It's a flat roll. God damn it. Um, <coughs> okay. Um, you're able to... You're able to know that a sword obviously would never be cold on its own. That, that does not, that's not how metal works. <laughs> let alone scabbards. So you, you're able to discern that it's a magical web item. Oh. Um, the cold touch probably is a sense of uh for lack of a better term ensuring that the wrong people don't touch it uh. and you are aware that if someone was to attune to it that kind of touch wouldn't affect the wielder ah do they do i know whose sword that is <laughs> you do not okay i was gonna be kind of curious and just gonna touch it and see if it is cold royal constitution <laughs> Yeah, uh, 18. It doesn't hurt you. Are you wearing your armor or are you just in your normal clothes? Yeah, in my armor. Okay. Um, your hand gets the cold chill. And you can see little ice crystals crawling along the, uh, the back of your hand on the armor. Oh. And like the minute you pull your hand away, the crystals melt like and just drip off your hand. Yeah, that is strangely cold. Yeah. Just appeared last night. Don't know where it came from. Just not one appeared. Of you, 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 did, you guys didn't bring a sword back, did you? Well, I know I didn't. I don't know about the rest party. Well, <clears throat> man, just, just, just don't, you know. Table scene's fine, so like apparently the table's okay. Right. Man, I just, guess just make sure no one else touches it. Yeah, will do. Make sure you eat all that if you've taken all that. I don't want seeing you throwing away anything I made. Yes, yes. Don't worry. I, I've been taught better than throw away food. You better have. You didn't. I'll throw you over the side of the boat. <laughs> Fair enough. He nods and watches as you leave. Okay. <clears throat> and if you want, you can head up to the top or you can head back to your room. It's up to you. Um, uh, I guess head up to the top, see what's going on. Look, okay. you head up top and uh, you find Hyacinth working on their bow. Yep. You see Amogzio captaining as best he can, given the circumstances. Um, 83N has returned with charts, holding them out so that, uh, Rowan knows where to go. You don't see a DFA, 
but at this point in your travels with the group, you realize boat, DFA, no, probably somewhere DFAing away from the water. <laughs> yeah. The way you press it is we don't hear screaming. We're probably the best we're going to get. Nothing bad's going on. Mm. So yeah, you can uh, act accordingly now that you're on deck with the others. Oh, okay. Um, I guess I was going to walk up to Hyacinth and ask, uh, did you happen to find a sword while we were on that island? Or do you know if anyone else did? Yeah, I did, actually. It was taking up space in my pouch, so I took it out and left it somewhere. It, it was weird. I, I also can't use it. It's too big. I figure someone else can probably use it. Or we can just sell it. Uh, too big wasn't really the issue. Was it not cold to your touch? I mean, it was a little bit, but it didn't like hurt. It was just strange. I can't use it. It's too big. So why would I keep it? Eh, fair enough. You just left I it figured... in the mess hall? Yeah, because people go in there. I didn't want to wake anybody up. Okay. Yeah, the chef was telling me it just showed up all overnight, so I was just wondering. Yeah, Gail had it in a box. And I just kind of took it while we were leaving, because I thought, why not? Yeah, that was good thinking, I think. I mean, if no, if no one can use it, then maybe we could sell it. You never know. Did you try using it? You like uh, the pointy, big things. I do. Uh, I did try to you know, test how it felt, and it certainly was uncomfortably cold to the touch. Reminder. Maybe you just need gloves. There's no reminder, though. You did know enough that it was probably an attunement-based thing. Oh, okay, I guess. Uh, but just, uh, no, just letting you know, like you, you know enough that if you someone attunes to cool. it, it might not affect the person who is attuned because you rolled uh, in that twenty. I did, so I guess I'll, I'll say I I do know that weapons like that tend to you'll be able to use them if you attune to them, which I assume is just have it on you for long enough. Uh, yeah, attunement is spending at hmm. least like i think it's an hour with the weapon yeah it's a, a short rest yeah one short rest length of time with the weapon yeah. which you're on a boat so you if you want if anyone was to attune it we would just say it's attuned within an hour yeah yeah i'm fine i think i have enough things i still have that thing that rayhan gave me that i haven't used yet and so I don't think I need a box sword <laughs> that's like almost as tall as I am. Well, no one else uses swords here, so. I mean, you do, don't you? Oh, aside from me, yeah. I, mean, I think Cory could use one. I think Cory just likes things that hit hard. Oh, yeah, she definitely prefers uh, axes from what I've seen. I mean, you. You two can do boulder paper shears for it. <laughs> uh, haven't played that since uh, I left home. You need to practice. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, is the sword like like two handed or one handed? What is it? Uh -huh. It's a bastard sword. The bastard sword, so that's I think one handed, right? One and one half. One and one half. You, you can use either one handed mm. or two handed. Oh, okay. The blade is three and a half feet long. Well, I have this conversation. Hyacinth is going to pull out the uh, the trident that they also have. Oh yeah, mm. you still have that. I forgot about that. <laughs> I do still have that. Um, <clears throat> they're gonna pull out the trident and just because they're sitting basically like cross-legged in a chair um and put that across their lap after they're done like restringing their bow and then motion to it and so it's like i like this thing like this is basically just a giant fork and like rayhan showed me how to put poison on it and how not to hurt myself while putting poison on it so that it hurts the other person more 
And the poison seemed to do, like, really good damage against that really annoying guy that we fought. So, I mean, if you can... If I had something that could maybe hurt somebody else that tried to touch my stuff, I think it would be a good idea. Uh, yeah, it certainly that weapon certainly suits you. I've been meaning to ask, what is it with the forks? They're just nice. I mean, can't really argue with that. Yeah. It, it, it's just a nice thing to have. I mean, like we had them where i'm from like from my home it's we use them all the time too but ours were weren't metal most of the time oh or like made of nice things like we would just make them ourselves which is nice and there was some really cool ones and really like fine crafted ones and some people were better at making them than others but like i just like the ones that if you shine them enough you can see yourself in them oh uh. But also they're they're nice and bendy. And then Hyacinth's gonna point up to the one the ear cuff that they had made out of a fork. And they come in different colors and like they're useful. And you can have a nice thing that is also useful. So then it's not you're not spending your money on something you don't need. So also because it's useful, I mean people usually have multiples of them. And if you just wanna like take one, they have more. So you don't have to worry about them not like having that later. You know what I mean? You know, that's a sound logic that I cannot argue with. At least you're not st stealing family photos. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, and guess... it's a useful gift you can give too. Like if you give somebody a fork, they're going to be able to use it eventually. That is also true. Some, but some people like spoons better. Like, everyone can use an extra spoon, but like, knives don't go over as well as gifts. Sometimes, if you hold them out the wrong way, they, they're seen as a threat. Yeah, you definitely don't want to point, have the pointy in at someone. Yeah. But you also don't want to. Hold on to the pointy end while handing one to somebody. Oh, no, definitely not. How did we get into a conversation? <laughs> this, is, this is what happens. This is the true plot of the whole game. This is, is what coloring. happens, okay? Oh, I mean, it's, it's an interesting quirk you would have noticed by now. So oh, yeah, no, just, just wondering about it. It was just one of those, like, wow, this is a cutlery <clears throat> conversation I didn't expect. Okay. <laughs> and then, you know. With their description, he's like, yeah, okay, yeah, makes makes sense, I guess, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm only asking just so I know. Were you planning on going back to the sword, or are you just gonna? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, uh, when she when she's done, yeah, that uh, well, I'll go see about the sword and like maybe like put it in my pack for safekeeping for now. Okay. Um, then sh if Hy if Hyacinth still has the thing I gave them, they can send it to you. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so if you didn't have it, I can send it to Mark. <laughs> Okie dokie. Posted. Oh, yeah, okay. You posted. Um, for brevity's sake, if the party is heading back to Sion for the moment, um, mm -hmm. instead of spending a whole goddamn session just role-playing travel, I will leave it up to you guys. Do you want to fast travel, or did you want to take time figuring out, like, what plans are going to be going on while you travel and then, you know, get to Sion when you get to Sion? I feel like we should probably see if we can get more information out of the false oracle that's true you do have her still on the ship and maybe even Mont Blanc see what he might need Fun fact. whenever we did get back to Sion 
he also did do something while you guys were kidnapping, so you guys can still talk to him about stuff. We did not kidnap. We convinced her to come with us. We asked if she wanted to come with us. We staged a kidnapping. True. There is a difference. The Bluetooth speaker came willingly. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> anyway. We um, are not kidnappers. I love how that's going to be debated by some groups. It's going to be like, they took her. We did not. <laughs> we saw the room. Her willingly. <laughs> we saw the room. Well, that was a lie. A convincing one, maybe. <laughs> I mean, Margaret did stab that dude's family photo, so. Yeah, fucking goddamn. <laughs> Mugsy was dark era. I've done nothing wrong. I did say you did. I'm saying it was very dark. <laughs> um, as you are the captain, though, Mugsy, that actually brings up a good thing. Um, did you plan on wanting to talk to the, the Oracle about stuff, or did you want to talk to Mont Blanc about stuff? Or are you just letting the whole party do their thing? Um, I mean, I'm probably just as much as a loss as everyone else for what they want to do, but um, Well, I didn't know if you want to be the one to do the interrogating, quote-unquote, or if you were just going to let someone else do it and relay what they get for you. Um, I mean, I don't mind being present for it, but I wasn't planning on doing any interrogating. Okay. Fair enough. I honestly have like zero interest in her. I was oh, no, like, that, well, well, you also got Mont Blanc, who, like he's, like I said, when you guys were off doing what you're doing with that, he was off getting information about, um, I think he was getting information on Gale. That's what you guys had him do. Um, either Gale or Dell. One or of the both. two. I forget which one it is. Uh, uh, my notes say he went to go find out if there's anything about Gale he could find out since he teleported away. There we go. So yeah, you guys can ask if he has anything or not. And you can also ask the Oracle if she has anything. Or you guys can just, you know, say fuck both of them and do your own shit. <laughs> your boat. I don't care. I do know, though, I wanted to have... Victoria checking on DFA. DFA, you have a knock on your door if you wish to answer it. I mean, yes, that's a that's a uh, radio silence on DFA. From the other side of the door is static. <laughs> she chooses not to answer. Fair enough. Um, all DFA hears is D Victoria say, um, I remember you saying before you didn't feel well on the water. Um, I'm leaving outside the door some of the stuff I made before if you need it. Um, if it's not helpful enough, just let me know. Hopefully you aren't feeling too bad. And then she kind of just disappears from the door, leaving the package of the anti c -sec meds for DFA. For her to grab at her leisure. And let me cut back to everyone else. Uh, Elric, you went to go grab the blade from the mess hall. Mm -hmm. And you have the, you, did you save the stoof? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, yeah, so did any of you want to go talk to the fake Oracle about more stuff, Hyacinth? Or were you planning on just winging it i thought we determined that she didn't really know anything or at least she didn't say anything that sounded like she knew anything she didn't really forwardly give anything up um there was also the i don't know what i was planning on asking but i know there was that implication that she would uh she would be honest about anything you guys asked. That could be helpful if you had any questions, though. Seeing that she did work for Gale for a while, so she might have something if you had questions. 
Or you could just interrogate her for the sake of, you know, making her feel like she's a prisoner. <laughs> that way she doesn't get too cozy. Hyacinth is going to try to after basically doing like the whole like sitting on deck for a while um, observing things doing the, the first mate thing that they're supposed to be doing which they don't really know what they're supposed to be doing as the first mate of the ship helping out Magzio uh, and making sure his life isn't stressful oh uh, well Magzio's not been present all day today so as I'm going to assume they have done their job. As of yeah. right now, last I checked, unless Mugs go in somewhere else, he was up with the uh, helm because when he came out yeah. of his room and in, inspected where they were heading. Mm-hmm. Um, so if there's nothing first mate wise that Hyacinth immediately needs to do after they finish basically cleaning all of their equipment and going over it, they're going to go back to their room. Mm hmm. And uh, look over the orb again and try to do the same puzzle thing that they did before where they got that vision of Dell. Oh, okay. Um, roll an intelligence then. Let's see if you can get it, like, the float, I mean, to reorganize, right? Uh, 16. Okay, 16. Um... Where do I have her? I mean, um, the orb does give you another spooky vision. Uh, this time, you're in the same, like, wait. Last time it was the vision of, like, Dell being put to sleep, like, not in the present. It was right? the messy lab. Yeah, okay, okay, so it's, okay just, just making sure I'm getting this, okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you're back in that lab. Um, you don't see anyone, because where Dell's positioned, you can't see people. You can just hear voices. Mm -hmm. You hear one man, one woman. Uh, the woman's shouting that she hired this man for a job, and he is to deliver, or she will make sure that he never sees what he needs from her. Um, after a bit of, of a pause, he responds with, I'm working as hard as I can, but you need to understand what you're asking me is nearly impossible. You want someone who can see all possible futures and give you the right answer. You're asking a lot. There is a pause again, and you hear either you make it work, or the only future you'll see will be a dark one and it'll be very cold, and you'll be forgotten. And then the orb pulls you back to the present. Hyacinth is going to shake off the discombobulated feeling that they get after being sucked back into their brain, um, and kind of just pat the orb. Thank it letting them know what's going on with Dell. So and you don't know if, when that was from, just so you know. Oh, I know. Hyacinth's under the assumption that the orb is trying to give them some kind of insight. Okay. Kind of like the way that the trees do. Like, the trees don't know how like, directions work. They just know stuff. They just know stuff. So Hyacinth's going under the assumption that, like, the orb kind of works like the trees. Okay. The, the orb doesn't really know what it's doing. Like, it knows stuff, but it doesn't know stuff the way that Hyacinth knows stuff. It's not conscious, it's just aware. Exactly. And since the voice that they heard last time in that lab offering help was Dell, and they were seeing through that voice, they're kind of just guessing mm. that again they're seeing through maybe Dell? Yeah. Okay. That's fair enough. So also Heisen knows that the orb likes Dell. So um it's hard to not like Dell. Right? It's very it's very hard not to like Dell. He's the best toaster. <laughs> um so 
they're going to thank the orb for their help and hope that they have a good nap and then put the orb back on their bed, tuck the orb in, pat it, and then go back on deck looking for uh, the oracle, the false oracle. Um, Hyacinth does find her, but not on top deck. You actually see her heading into the uh, mess hall. Like, as you come out of the uh, your room, you see her heading into the mess hall. They're just going to observe her. They're just going to, like, kind of follow behind. Are you trying to be sneaky about it, or are you just... Sure, why not? Okay, then roll stealth. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> that moment, are you being shady, or are you just being... They, they don't know... They don't really have anything to do right now, so they're just going to follow yeah. the first person they see, which is the false oracle. Um, let's see. It is going to be a... You stalking me on your own ship? No. <laughs> what are you talking about? Shut up. It's going to be a 19. Yeah, you definitely are able to sneak behind her and she doesn't notice you. You are unnoticed until you want to be. Uh, they are going to follow. Okay. I'm assuming the Oracle is going to grabbing food and whatnot and then going to sit down at the table. Yeah, she uh, she also talks to Mont Blanc for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, and because you're coming into the room behind her. You hear him go, So last, tell me, did they really get you to come willingly or did they force you? And there's a pause and goes, well, in the end, willingly, but there was some debate in the beginning. It, it, it was a mess. <laughs> and I think it was because I don't think they expected me to be awake. They seemed surprised, but not surprised to see me. I don't know. It was very late. Yeah, they, when they saved me from Gale. They really gave him the fucking good run for his money until the bastard just teleported out of there. The Hyacinth, you notice her seemed to react very shocked by the teleporting. And mm -hmm. Gus goes, wait, he actually just teleported away? He didn't run? Huh. Hyacinth's going to speak up at that point. Okay. And just kind of like, because they've just been standing, like yeah. out of kind of out of sight, out of the way. Um, and they're just going to tilt their heads aside and say, "Get us a magic user. He's stronger than we are right now." But I mean, I think we could catch up to it because Dell is also a magic user, and Dell can do some very scary things. But he's a different kind. Of magic than Dell's magic. I think. Magic's weird. That elicits a laugh out of both of them, because magic is in fact very weird. Um Mont Blanc goes, not wrong about that, he is a magic user. Uh, I had to guess. He he's one of those learned types, not the uh, ones who are born with it. But I could be wrong. I didn't really spend time getting to know him on a personal level. Thank you again, though, for saving me. Of course. See if I heard something in the basement. We can't just leave things in the basement. Especially when they might be people. D DFA, that, that's, the, that's the one that does the, the, the spear thing. The very good jumper. The very good jumper. Right, right. I didn't even know she was in there. So you guys all showed up. Some of us are very sneaky. Helps when no one's looking for small creatures like us. I think people were looking for you, though. I, I think that's what Magzio said. I mean more like, due to us being shorter than you guys, the taller folk don't notice us when we're just doing our own thing. Oh. Because the taller folk don't look down much. Oh, I always look down. I always try to make sure there is no trip hazards. At that, the Oracle kind of snickers at you calling Moogle's trip hazards. 
whenever you live in the forest, there's lots of roots and things on the ground and you'll be better off not falling over them all the time. So it's good to look out for trip hazards. You're from the forest then? Wait, wait. which forest are you from? Hyacinth's going to try to visualize like the map. Well, no, he's, he's asking like what you call it. Oh. Like what? what is the, the name of your forest? Um, we're just, uh, I, it's been a while. I don't actually remember. Off table. How, how's it feel to be asking what names and things are? Huh? There, there's a reason I just doesn't remember. I know. But yes. Um, they're just going to kind of think about that for a second and picture like a map in their head and they're going to be like it's like i know there was a city and then there was a forest and then you go deeper into the forest not as far too far where it gets cold somewhere around there oh so you're from the republic you're not from the empire oh no not the empire figured with you guys being on the island i figured you guys were from the empire so close and all no uh we're from all over, actually. I think everyone's from somewhere. We all just kind of ended up in Sion. Hmm. Yes, yes, that's where we're heading, I hear. Orc looks over. I don't mean to be rude, but if Gale did teleport away, there's a chance I know where he... I think I know where he went. It's not entirely... Have- it's not 100%, but I think... I, I have an idea. Is it somewhere where they would have someone who knows everything that's going to happen ever? You you get a very weird look from both of them, like, what? Because I admit, I didn't understand how you meant to ask that question. It's the, the quote from the vision. It's like oh, having, oh, oh, okay. The, the two yeah. of them just give you a weird look, like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Um. Yeah, like if you're looking for some someone who would know every possibility that will ever happen, ever, would that be where Gale would be? I don't know about that, but Gale had long, well, not Gale had, but Gale's family, before they all went to the Republic with the new Guado Salam, his family had a, um, Mance Mansion in uh, Melof, which is nearby the island. I know he would always, he would frequent it now and again. Kind of a uh, he wanted to remember where his family came from. That way, when he got what he wanted, he can go back and reclaim it. I don't know if that's where he teleported, but it's a good place to look if you're looking for. Okay, well, we can tell Magzio that, and then him and Rowan can mark it on a map. Maybe 83N is the one who marks things on maps. The Oracle looks at you. 83 what? The, the Navigator. You just see, you look at my blog. A shiny idiot who wouldn't stop talking last night. Oh. The one who tells jokes. Yes, the Shindroid. Okay. Right, right. I didn't know that you guys had named it. Them, sorry. I know you guys, or you, you treat shindroids like people. Sorry. I mean, I treat trees like people. You do what now? Like, she, it, it, she's at that point of like, okay, I'm either stroking out or you just, you're not what I'm used to. Heisen just wiggles their bunny ears. Mom Block actually lets out a very hearty laugh at the reaction of like, you're not used to the the rabbit people, are you? They're 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 they are their own kind of special. You don't want to fuck with, you don't want to fuck with them in their own environment, though. No, right? you, you, you might not make not. it out of the wood. Especially whenever we're friendly with the trees in the area. I'll do my best to remember that. Always be kind to plants. I do my best to do that. 
you can tell she's thinking to herself, like, have I pissed off a tree recently? <laughs> Uh, also, during all this, uh, Elric, did you take the sword with you, or are you still in the mess with it? Uh, no, I have it with me. Okay. Just had to make sure that, like, they weren't having a conversation while you're in the corner poking a sword. <laughs> <laughs> did you wish to spend that time attuning it, or were you just taking it with you? Um, yeah, I figured since no one else really uses swords, I might as well. So you're gonna attune it? Yeah. Okay, because I asked two things, you said yes. <laughs> Did I? Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, so we'll say that during all of this, you're in your room attuning the blade. Okay. Um, was there anything else you want to say to the Oracle slash Mont Blanc Hyacinth? Nope, that's it. Okay. Um, you're doing the attunement. DFA's DFAing. Um, Mogzio is Mogzioing. Uh, I think we would say, unless there was anything else that needed to be RP'd, first day of the journey travels without problem. The attunement is done. Um, everyone goes about their business on the ship. Does Elric want to test out the new weapon? Uh, sh sure. <laughs> How would uh, you like to test it? I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, if you spent the time attuning... Mm. You'll find that when you touch it again, mm -hmm. there is no cold feeling to you. Like, it feels like a normal blade. Yeah. The, the um, as the item description says, there is still that um, cold mist coming mm -hmm. off of it. Mm -hmm. But to you, there is no cold temperature. It's just a sword. Let's see. Um, the weight feels very, very um, balanced. It is very, it's a little smaller than yours. If I remember yeah. how your sword is, but because you can use it one or two handed, mm -hmm. you can use it very well as the uh, stats for it show. See, um, what else? Also, based on the lore, you can find out why it might be best kept with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although he would know that's her sword, would he? <laughs> I would say during the attunement, you can roll a, um... Getting to know you check. <laughs> Getting to know you. No, um... Vibe check. Vibe check failed. Vibe check. <laughs> Vibe check failed. The blade comes alive and kills Elric in his sleep. Um... No. <clears throat> I would say... You have history? I forget if you said you had history. Uh, no. Nobility, religion, and arcana. Oh, sorry. Uh... Wait, is that it? Yeah, nobility and religion. Um, I think I don't think there's anything you really have that could like skill no. Um, do you have any of the crafts? Just making sure. Um, uh, yeah, I have. I can craft weapons. <laughs> oh, okay, then yeah. Um, I'm just. I guess you could just roll a flat intelligence if you want. Okay, I doubt I'm gonna get a freaking nat twenty again. Get one. That's an eight. <laughs> um, I would say the what you get from it, because of the what's it called the hilt, not the hilt, mm. the pommel, having a uh, a bird's talon, mm. holding a blue like sapphire. It looks like something your mother used to wear jet like a sapphire necklace she had oh so you you think that this might have been her old one because you remember she had it once and then at some point she didn't have it but she didn't seem to be concerned about where it was ah so you, the intelligence is enough to be like wait no <laughs> maybe uh, maybe <laughs> like like it's you would have to like clearly go to like maybe your dad and be like hey that's familiar <laughs> yeah but the, the leading theory right now is like wait a minute no could this be my mother's sword i don't know why gail would it then it's like oh gail would have oh wait why would gail have that <laughs> so like you're kind of like in that flux of like theory, <clears throat> theory boarding now because mm. of that eight fair enough 
But no, it is attuned to you, and you can use it without any drawbacks. Sweet. So yeah, if you ever use it, um, you do the cold damage on top of your normal damage and all. Okay, and I can use it two-handed still? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because since it's a sword in half, um, for those who don't know, a bastard sword <clears throat> would be what Jon Snow had in Game of Thrones. Well, it's, it says longsword, actually, not bastard sword. The, no, I know, that's... but that's because Pathfinder doesn't have bastard sword as a weapon. Uh, it, I thought it, it didn't it? Isn't it exotic or some shit? <laughs> the, the, the thing I use to make the custom thing does not have all the options. Uh... So I'm like, no, we'll just we'll put it that and just leave it. But yeah, for a reference. Yeah, there there is a bastard bastard sword. Mm, well, it's uh a little more. It's it's proficiency exotic though, so I don't know if you would give me a pass on that if it did have its stats. No, this is just like I said. That's what it is. You you've attuned to it, so we're saying you're fine. Okay. But um, do, do we do we want to make it an actual bastard sword stat or is just keep it long? Just sword? keep it as it is. Sorry. <laughs> uh no you're good um but no like, sorry it's a little they're a little better <laughs> you have frostbite i know but i miss my big sword <laughs> you have both true <laughs> you have more weapons than most well most you have more dead death deadly power than most people in the room yeah, listen i'm just asking because you said it was a bastard sword but it's not a bastard sword. <laughs> it is a bastard sword in terms of design not in uh -huh. terms of mechanics because it is a magical weapon see got it but yeah when you use it you can either you can use it one-handed or you can use both hands all right uh but yeah you did all that um hyacinth got all the info that they were talking to those two about in that conversation um dfa is dfaing uh mugs you know, i know you said you didn't know if you, what you want to do or anything but was there anything you did want to do during your the transit for Mogzio in general I just, I mean, we already kind of determined that we do want to go back to Sion, so... Okay, I don't know if there was anything just, he needed to do with the rest of the group or anything. No, that was pretty much just want to make sure we all, you know, we were all doing what we wanted to do. Okay. Um, but yeah, the day trout I mean, passes without problems. Um, come the evening, seas are still calm. There's a bit of a breeze. It is... That time of year where it's going to either be really warm or really cool at night. Um, also, being at sea does kind of help. Uh, let's see. I do that lovely little. Uh, does anything encounter happen? Roll. Never know what you find on the ocean. Are you staying in your room the entire day, Elric, or are you going out at all? Uh, no, I guess. I'll head out after. Well, I was just, I was just asking because, you know, doing my little <clears throat> rolls. Mm -hmm. um, during your passing by, Elric, you don't see anything of import. Uh, Mogzio, you... You see a pot of dolphins following the ship for a while, and one of them splashes up and gets 83 and a little wet. And they do their little... Creepy dolphin cackle before swimming away. Fucking hate it. <laughs> and Hyacinth, if you had gone out at all, or just were during your passings, mm -hmm. you happen to notice that a um I this was the um a flock of seagulls have taken perch on the top of the ma main mast and are just chilling mm -hmm. out on there, making a nest. Because it's a flock of seagulls, you have to run away. I hate that there's that option on this table. <laughs> oh, I was gonna have Hyacinth attack them. Do you want to attack the seagulls? No, it's mean. They're just trying to make a nest. It's fine. <laughs> you sound hesitant as if you really want to. Hyacinth isn't a huge fan of birds, neither am I. But at the same time, it's the whole thing of, like, they didn't want to attack the rock because it was protecting its baby. Fair. Okay. Eagles just want a place to put their babies, so. Fair enough. Morals of the, fo the forest. 
Okay. Um, um, but they they will go and tell 83N, like, basically the general directions that the... Uh, Celine, was that her name? Selena. That Selena had told them about Gail's mm-hmm. manor. All right. Uh, 83N does mark that down. On the maps they have, there is... The, all that's on the map is the city of Meloth, which is on the coast, the right of the Oracle's Temple. Uh-huh. Um, they make the point of, you guys aren't that far out where if you were to change course, it wouldn't be too much of a wait. But if you guys want to keep heading to Sion, that'll be up to the captain. And decide what to, like, to go there later. Um, but that... I We'll just leave that information with 83N to tell Mogdio, like, whenever... Yeah, when Mogdio um, pops back up. Yep. Okay. Um, Elric, you and t- it, yep, Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and then Heisen's going to spend the rest of, like, the night before they go to bed down in the area that Del was in charge of, just kind of dusting and taking stock of whatever Del's job was. Oh god, okay. They're not there. That means you need to roll a perception because you're down in the fucking like where all the smuggled shit is. (laughs) Oh god. (laughs) That was where Dell had been the whole time was with all the smuggled goods. Oh god, I fucking love that. I thought Dell was just in charge of inventory. Um, you said a perception check? Yeah, like because Harrison's gonna be like, oh, this is what Dell was doing down here. What's down here? 23. Oh god. Okay, what does what does Hyacinth find in the fucking Oh boy, what does Hyacinth find? You said twenty-three? Twenty-three. Oh boy. <laughs> Most of the crates are labeled, you know, food, drink. All, you know, like the standard cargo. Uh-huh. Um, some of the boxes look different, though, and that gives you a chance to, like, move them aside, and you notice while they're labeled one thing, they're slightly open, and when you lean closer to look, you realize there's weapons. Like, a lot of weapons in a box labeled food. <laughs> um, you find a bunch of swords in one labeled um, mead. Uh, one box labeled medical supplies is full of like spears and uh, lances. And you're coming to realize, huh, Del mislabeled all these boxes. What's up with that? He's normally better than that. Does this look like Del's handwriting, though? No, it does not. So Hyacinth is going to assume someone mislabeled all these boxes and it was Del's job to relabel them. Because of your perception, that assumption, um, it takes you about all of, we'll say, 15 minutes for you to realize, wait a minute. There's a little, like, connecting dot visual above her Hyacinth's head before the, oh shit, is this a smuggler ship? (laughs) You've heard of them, and then you're realizing, oh no. Oh, is this what a smuggling operation looks like? Hyacinth's going to put First off, is there are there any poison vials in these boxes? Let us find out. Uh, high or low? Low. There is an entire shipping crate full of, we'll say golf balls, not golf balls. Golf balls? No, tennis ball shaped, well, sized glass containers. And they are secured in hay. And then, like, a chain system to keep them from, like, shaking. All Is it similar to how the mercury was stored? No, it's more like... Oh, let's see if I can... This, um... you, you saw the second Zorro movie, right? Uh-huh. Remember how they had those, um... The glycerin containers in those, like, spring setups? And- yeah. Imagine that, but on a smaller scale for a box so that these vials can just not be broken in transit. They'll take one. Okay, you'll take one. Just, just one out of it. It is, it is, in fact, a poison vial. You found them all. 
and they're just gonna like take a moment look it over put it back in the box and then gently put the box back with all of the other ones and close everything up go above deck is anybody above deck that's awake um, it's just getting to be late, so unless people went to bed early, I would assume everyone's still doing their thing. Um, unless Mogzio has gone to his room to avoid everything, I think he would be on deck somewhere. Is Mogzio still awake? Yeah, should be. Harrison is going to basically go up to where there's a bit of distance and a very confused look on their face, and just flat out ask, Mogzio? Why are there smuggled goods in the room where Dell works? Everything's mislabeled. That's because, uh, apparently, um, yeah, they stole us a, a stolen, or they stole us a smuggle ship to provide our ship for us. all that stuff down there ours um essentially so can we open up like a weapon shop on Sion now i don't see why not okay and they're gonna go back down <laughs> just out of curiosity how close how close did hyacinth want to talk about that with uh Mogzio to like rowan and 83n who were on deck hyacinth does not care okay if, if Mogzio did not stop the conversation between the two of them, Hyacinth did not notice and or care. Okay. Um, Especially considering the fact that Rowan and 83N were part of the securing of the ships. Just making sure. Um, as Hyacinth goes downstairs, Mogzio, 83N looks over at Rowan, then looks to you. Wait, we stole a ship? <laughs> and Rowan just goes... We liberated a ship, A3N. Stealing implies ownership. Thieves aren't reputable enough to consider what they have owned. We liberated it. Is that? Don't ask that again. Right, Captain? <laughs> Pretty much. Exactly. Looks at A3N again. Also. Don't tell anyone else it's stolen. I know you, you like to make friends. This has always belonged to the captain. Any other story you hear is a lie. And with that, A3N goes, Processing. New data logged. Got it. God. <laughs> I love how the party is slowly learning the ship's stolen. Hyacinth will spend the rest of their night before going to bed taking a proper inventory All right. just of the different boxes and in like one of their notebooks they have they're going to write the name that is on the box and then the proper thing that is in the box. Hyacinth has to do a fixing of everything. Yeah, and they're gonna whenever they're They've made some kind of progress. They're going to stick it in one of the boxes, kind of sticking out a little bit, so they, the next time they do it, they can come back and finish it. And when Dell's back, they can give it to Dell. Alright, um... Roll me a d6. So we can see how many boxes you get through. Five. Five? Alright. Uh, you are able to get... Oh my god. <laughs> that was all... Highest and found a lot of stuff in these boxes. It's fine, you can just drop it into the inventory Oh, I'm collected. going to, and I think you're just going to sit there going, oh shit, all oh, this is a lot of stuff. Remember, all money on this list is just converted to gill. I don't care if it says copper, gold, silver, whatever. It is just all... Gill. Gill. Oh, Listen, we got an 
We got an island to stock. You do, and I fucking think this is going to be a lot towards it. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. What, how, what do we have for time? Um, this would be a good place. This, I would say this is a good place for uh, a quick break while everyone takes the, the, the sleeps for their the second night at sea. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, audience, please get up yourselves, stretch, do what you got to do for break time and stuff. We'll be back in just a bit. That applies to the players as well. Get up, stretch, get a bathroom break or snack break or whatever you got to do. And we'll be back in just a bit. Don't go away. All righty. I, I, I did have a mute. Okay. I, oh, shit. Okay. So we're back. Uh, for the sake of the brevities for the audience... Uh, instead of making us do hours upon hours of ro role play, that is seven days travel from the island to Sion, we're going to say that the party made it to Sion quite safely. Um, Hyacinth spent the week sorting through many, many crates of smuggled material. Um, what they do with all that stuff is going to be not my problem until it is my problem. I mean, we should let DFA have one of the ballista, I'm just saying. No. It is highest some things to organize. <laughs> arguably, arguably, the ship has ballista on the ship. <laughs> Everyone will be gifted random shit later. <laughs> um, anyway. I, you, guys do, I you guys do arrive in Sion to a rather, I don't want to say surprised, but um, unexpected reading because the ship is not what anyone expected to be coming into port. And uh, thankfully, it's we'll say you guys arrive at midday. Uh, Rowan and the others tell you guys that uh, if you are needed to leave again, let them know. They can either stay on the ship or they can head into town with you. It's up to you guys. They don't wish to be a bother. They do not know how long you're going to be in town. Hey, was that about, sorry? Sorry. Um, Rowan says that it's up to you guys how long you are staying. If you guys are planning on staying long term, they will disembark with you. But if this is just a short stop, they will wait on the ship until you guys are ready to leave. Uh, if we have the crew to get it ready to get the ship ready to go again without them, then they can come ashore. Mm. Uh, Rowan actually takes that time to be like, mm, Captain, as we are a bit short staffed, would you like me to go around town and maybe pick up some more hands to make the ship run better? Sure. Mm, very good. Um, do you want questions asked or whoever I get you're okay with? Let's be a little selective, yeah. Mm, very good. Very good. I, I'll pass along anything that is needed to you, but I, I'll do my best to get us the best we can get. Uh, have a good time ashore, and uh, if you need us, you know where we'll be. Before any of you can disembark, Victoria is jumping out onto deck and rushes off saying she's going to head to the beach and get some sun. And you see her fly down the gangway and rush off into town looking for the nearest beach. <laughs> Unaware that there really isn't any on this island. What kind of island is this? Well, no, it's not in the sense of like, there's, yes, there's a shore, but there isn't like beaches. Yeah. Um, Doc Master is there. Still, and I go through my notes because I forgot the fucking name. It's been so long. We haven't been here in months. Well, a month in in universe. Uh, where did I put the notes for the party? Um, excuse me. Oh, fuck, I remember. Who are you looking for? The uh, Doc Master. He's on the NPC thing that I wrote down. Oh, did you? Oh, oh yeah, you did. Okay. But yeah, um, two of them show up. It's Garrick. 
the Garrett. harbor master, and Sophie is the assistant. There we go. Thank you. Both of them see you quite surprised that you're coming off the boat when you guys all step off. And uh, Garrick greets you very welcomingly, saying that it's been almost a month since they last saw you, but hopefully you're all well. And asked where you got the ship. <laughs> We've been busy. Clearly. Um, given your relationship with the town, we are foregoing the docking cost. Though, I must ask, um, do you have anything to, to declare in case? Anything I need to know on the ship, or is it better off? I, no questions asked. I mean, out of character, we essentially own this town, yeah? <laughs> You're good standing enough where, like, you know, they're not going to question you. But, like, if you suddenly have, you know, immoral things, they might have a few questions. <laughs> I'll just say if, if he wants to catalog, he's worth the welcome to. Otherwise, we're just going to be taking our spoils and bringing them into town to either turn over or take them to our place. Very good. Just had to be sure. Uh, you just wanted to make sure you weren't bringing anything, uh, you know, of ill repute with you. But At the word ill repute, DFA walks off the ship. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, I am a mother. And that's all she says. Garrick just stares and goes, I don't want to know how long. No, no. Just cl closes his little um, notebook, looks to his assistant, and goes, we're done. Let's go. I forgot. Well, nope, we're done. Let's go. And they walk off very quickly. With Garrick. DFA Mutter turns to Moxie and goes, you're welcome. <laughs> Didn't you miss this? <laughs> The town is yours? Well, not yours, but you know what I meant. What is it going to take for the town to be ours? A lot of money. I a mean, yeah, a lot, oh, of, well, you, you got a some, lot of money. You got some investing to do. Where'd I put the side quest thing? You, you, you guys can put some money into the town to start making renovations. I've been suggesting we put money into this town. No, no, no. no. Like now, that you're, now, that, now, that you're, now that you're back, you can actually start doing yeah, that. Now we can actually do it. You can start like yeah. giving up the funds to put things into what you want to like invest in. We I've have, been saying we, we put have, money in this town the entire time since and day one. Now you have the opportunity. You have money. You have a lot of money. Yeah. We didn't have much stuff when we first left here. Also, I you guys have a mansion <clears> to go like check out because it's been way more than a week. Uh, True. So, like, you guys have the you have the mm -hmm. run of the island to decide what you <clears throat> want to do in the spare time you have. I'm going to guess DFA. Once you have came down the game plank, do you have a preference of where you're going with um, Igamides? Oh, she'll just kind of wait for Mogzio. Okay. I love how everyone's putting the pressure on Mogzio. He doesn't get a break. Um, Never. So how long are we going to be here? Like several days or a short while? You tell couple me. Days. A couple days. A couple days. How does weapon crafting work in Pathfinder? Um, if blacksmith. If well, yeah, well, I could go to blacksmith, but it's better. I, I get like a bonus if I make something myself. If Mogzio beats me to it by head, I'm grabbing this thing so I can explain it to you. Ugh. Pulling up the thing. <clears throat> uh, the basic function of the craft skill, however, is to use a, allow you to make items of the appropriate type. The DC depends on the complexity of the item to be crafted. You see your check result and the price of the item determine how long it takes to make a particular item. The item's finished price also determines the cost of raw materials. Um, to determine how much time and money it takes to make an item, follow the, these steps. 
find the item's price in silver pieces, in this case, skill. Um, find the item's DC from the table, which, you know, you tell me and I'll find it. 15. 15 DC? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's it's a martial weapon. Oh, well, I, just, I didn't know if, you know. Uh, you pay one-third of the item's price in, for raw material cost. Then you make the appropriate craft checks representing one week's worth of work. If the check succeeds, multiply your check by the res result by the DC. If the result times the DC equals the price of the item, uh, then you've completed the item. If it is, uh, if the result is, if the result times the DC equals double or triple the price, you completed the task in one half or one third of the time. Other, multi other multiplies burr. reduce the time in the same manner. My brain just went burr. <laughs> um, you pay one third of the, the, the material cost. Okay, so it's 50 gold, so a third of that. Uh, do, 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 one third of 50 is... I am sorry, I'm not faster. You said 50? 14? Yeah, it was 50. It was the cost of the greatsword. Uh, sixteen point six. So we'll say sixteen. Okay. So I pay that, and then what? <laughs> you. Uh. I roll something. Yeah, you roll your craft. Your craft skill. Okay. You have the the craft weapon. I do. Yes. Okay, you roll that. Uh huh. And the you get that number and multiply it by the DC. All right. So I can give you a look on it. You go. He's uh, offering to yes, give you luck. Please. Now I'm just picturing Mogzio mm -hmm. staring at Elric as oh, he's thank, blacksmithing. Thank you, Mogzio. 19. All right. So you, that's the roll. Oh, wait. 19, 19 plus uh, craft weapon. 7. 6. 26. Okay. So 26 times the DC says 15? Yeah. 15. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh this is what i'm doing for the yeah. whole time around the island. yeah okay okay the, the, while you're doing i'm looking for the table everyone else what would you like to do we gotta find the thing so revisiting the comment that you want to do the investing hyacinth made about demoxio about we could just open up a shop and sell yeah. the, the stolen things the smuggled things that we have acquired at least some of them, but other ones we could sell them to local shops so then they could sell it. Or we could have them sell it for us but whenever we start bringing in business. So Hyacinth is going to attempt to basically like or once again looking through the things that they've gotten and separating out what would probably be best to sell off-island and what we could like just go ahead and sell here to like the merchants and whatnot if they might have use of something. Um, so if DFA would like to lend a hand with that, yes, yeah, or can. Magzio, or DFA and Magzio. Um, and Elric, whenever Elric's done, it takes being a blacksmith I'm because be of that for days. <laughs> no, actually, oh, it doesn't okay. because what you rolled it would have shortened it to one day. Oh, are you serious? I am fucking serious. <laughs> Mugs, you Mugzio helped you shorten it to like a day and like a half at most. Thank you, Mugzio, because I rolled low the first. <laughs> yeah, you mm. <laughs> crafting. Uh... Oh, what about like ma masterwork and all that bullshit? Does that add anything to it? Did you like, more want time? To, did you want to make it masterworked? If it if if it doesn't add more time, well, no, like, it, it it would, yes, would, because was... you're doing okay. more stuff. You technically have to make it masterwork when you craft it. Oh yeah, you, well yeah. Oh okay, so yeah, because um, so I'm good then. <laughs> so okay, wait, hold on. Uh, the masterwork component on its own, uh, that would actually increase the price. Just so you know, another three hundred. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. So, what did you get before? I have to do the math again. 26. Seven, six, yeah, 27. 26. That was 26 types of times. 15? Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, so you beat it by... Uh, yeah, okay, it takes you... 
equals the price that you yeah you complete the item well the cost you pay for the yeah, no no i had to make sure i wasn't third? skipping steps no it took you the, it took you the appropriate amount of time okay what's this whole masterwork component the cost you pay is like one third of the given amount what the fuck does that mean where do you see that uh you create a masterwork weapon blah 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 the masterwork component has its own price 300 gold pieces for a weapon yep blah, blah blah and then after that it says the cost you pay for the masterwork components is one third of the given amount yeah yeah for like the materials yeah because you're you're crafting it so it's only 100 gold extra oh not, not 300 okay so 116 total yeah okay and what you got you definitely doubled it so sweet thank you box yeah that means if it does it's doubled you keep complete it in one half the time. So normally it would be what a week. Yeah. So you complete it in three. We'll say three days. Sweet. That's what I'm doing for three days. <laughs> Again, Mogzio just staring at you, judging like you're doing it wrong. You're doing it right. <laughs> you missed a spot. <laughs> Way to judge. <laughs> that that's uh, how, that's how I imagine the luck <laughs> point working. Okay. So yes, you so, now so have your weapon. Sorry about that. Go ahead. So that's going to take Elric and Mogzio three days? Yes. Okay, so I guess Hyacinth and DFA could spend three days yep. distributing merchandise okay. and selling things. Girls' night. <laughs> Girls' nights. <laughs> I, I, I need to know, yeah. how, does, how does DFA want to be a shop person? We're business people. <laughs> what does DFA's business side look like? He always ups the price if anybody tries to haggle. Oh, God. And she always knows exactly how many of something there is. See, I believe that. I believe DFA is like the one who's actually like, no, there was 10 of those. Put that back. Okay. Um, just so I know, looking at the inventory, what are you guys specifically unloading that moment? Are you just taking um, whatever's in the thing or are you specifically unloading something? I was going to suggest just by us looking at this, like things like the gems... We okay. can pretty much just like unload. Well, I was gonna say like we can. I knowing that this island doesn't have a whole lot of money, they really don't. So it That's was more of a uh, we could sell the gems off island okay. somewhere. But they're pretty versatile. Yeah, but it's all of like the common objects that we uh, got. So like the salvage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like stuff like that would be more things that like if we can go around to whatever shop would deal with that like there's like an anvil and like nails and yeah parts and things that would be good for like the blacksmith yeah, so yeah, if we yeah. can go and sell them to the blacksmith be um, like a supply chain kind of thing yeah, yeah yeah okay so like you guys become the general store giving to everyone else um but i was going to ask if we do this can we knock off the price from the that's what side I was, quest journal that is what i was getting to i would need both okay. of you uh, where is it? I would need. If we're technically investing. Yes, I know, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna how much you invest? Because you guys are technically selling it. Um, what I'm gonna have you both do is roll, either appraise, or I wish it was a fucking barter. <laughs> well, I thought DFA had something for bartering. Oh wait, yeah, do, DFA, don't you have a barter skill thing? I have plus two in diplomacy when dealing with business matters. Yeah. So Damn. DFA can do diplomacy. I also have diplomacy. Okay, you can either do diplomacy or or um or um. A, uh, wait, what? A, I think appraise would apply. Appraise would be to find like the worth of something. Yeah, but in a way like that could you could also use it to your advantage, arguably. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. We'll say well, for this one, because you're, you're, you're doing it for the, you know, investing, we'll say it's a diplomacy. Mm -hmm. So you both roll diplomacy. DFA, you have your plus two, and Hyacinth, you're rolling as, you know, normal. As a party, are we good with this idea? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what I expected. Okay. Well, so we just have a bunch of junk. <laughs> well, what, how well you do will determine how much is knocked off the cost for the investing. And whatever is knocked up, whatever is left over, you can just use your own gill if you want. Okay. 
So, yep, do your diplomacies. 16. Okay. Uh, I also got a 16. All right. Um, I will give you the options of the... We have 16s. So you can either do the tailor, the bank, the art merchant, um, or... Staring at this, geez, my brain just kind of skewed. Um, no, okay, yeah, the tailor... The art merchant or the bank which would you want to either you can do both of them agree or you guys can pick two of them one each maybe the bank i think that like i said you can either do one each or you guys can invest two points into one building of the three. We made the brothel already, right? No, we're still working on the brothel. They oh. they didn't roll high enough for the brothel to be counted. Well, I mean, if we, I mean, if it's going by Gil, couldn't we just pay the 500 difference? I mean, yeah, I mean, if, yeah, you want, you guys can do that too instead. You can pay the 500 difference and just get the brothel. I know I'm so cruel giving you choices. <laughs> so is the overall cost what you're going by? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was confused by that for a second. I'm fine with I, I will personally tip in like the whole five hundred to do the brothel. Okay, so if you want you can do that. Um DFA, what did you what did you want to invest in? Right. DFA has no stake in this. So you're just going with whatever? <laughs> she doesn't consider this home, so she does not care. Valid. Valid. Would DFA Actually, like to keep the ballistas? Hold on. I'm going to make an offer for DFA, and I may regret this quickly. Oh, God. Um, would you like to do a animal handling role to possibly set up a chocobo base for Egamedes and the others? Would you believe that's my one nat 20 of the night? <laughs> <laughs> that's the first nat 20 of the night. You can still do, we can do other ones. Um, all right. The 24. You're able to, like, you know, give stuff up to everyone. And then you find a, uh, in the town, your DFA is able to find a farmer who notices Egamedes and goes very politely, offers, because they are specifically a, an, a animal farm type thing. I don't know the actual term between regular farmer for food and one for animals. Um, says if you are okay with it, they can go up to your mansion because they know who you are. They will set up a pen area so that you can have your chocobo have their entire space to move around, be free and all that, as well as they will be willing to work to make the Egamedes ready for racing or whatever you want to do with them at your, you know, your beck and call more or less. You'd have your own personal like groomer, trainer, whatever you want to call them for Egamedes. Yeah, I should probably be into it. Okay. Um you're able to exchange the, you know, the business details. And um he volunteers and says, by the way, what'll happen is if while you're here, away, whatever, if you leave Egamedes with him. He will work on making Egamese race ready or just however you want, and he will focus on that level of type like uh, training while you're gone. So you can decide what type of chocobo you want Egamese to be. Instead of you having to worry about it, someone else will do the work for you. You're going to send Egamese to boarding school. <laughs> boarding school at home. So that's what you want to do, and you said you want to invest in the brothel? Yes. Okay. Um, the 500 gil plus whatever you were able to diplomacy away money-wise. Get you enough gil to open the brothel finally. Um, 
you can off table decide all the names the details all that crap you want to do for it and like the rules for it um the townspeople are actually surprised that you reopened it not because they didn't want it there but they were just surprised um someone would want to reopen it. and while you're reopening isa comes up to you and just says i know what you're thinking no i'm quite good with that, with my job as is <laughs> I appreciate Hyacinth. the offer. Hyacinth's just going to look at Issa. And while they're sweeping out the dust of this place, because I'm sure it's very dusty. Oh, yeah. Um, they're going to just look, look him straight in the face and say, I forgot about you for a while. Then I remembered you. So now it's fine. He is going to react with a... He rolled bad. <laughs> he rolled really bad. Lisa, poor man. He doesn't have high charisma. Um, he rolled to say, I hope you forgot for good reasons. I don't know. How did you forget? I, I, he doesn't know what to say. Magic. Some weird magic. I didn't just forget about you. I also forgot about Gail. What was his name? Jeff. Are you trying to be funny with him, or are you actually forgetting? I, I'm trying to be funny. Okay, because so like he's—I was about to make you roll a deception to be convincing. He just looks at you and gives a short chuckle and goes, "I'm just glad I'm remembered, I guess." Yeah. Well, I rolled a charisma, like I straight ch yeah. charisma, and I got a sixteen. So, so I was trying to make a joke. No, he um, he, he believes you, <laughs> but then he's like, "Wait, no, that 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 was a that was a joking tone." Okay, yeah, you're kidding. Okay. He also says it's glad to see you. He's, he's glad you guys all made it back. But he says, he does ask, where's Dell? Dell was kidnapped. He drops the um, room he was holding goes, I'm sorry, you what? I just goes and picks it up and hands it back to him and just says, Dell was kidnapped. We're going to hopefully find him soon. But we just have to regather some things before we go and try. You're handling this very calmly i mean we almost killed some someone over it we almost killed gail actually and the rest of, was there for that and the rest of you were just as calm as you about the whole missing Gail thing no of course not okay he goes back to sweep, yeah. he goes back to sweeping and just thinking over what you said um Going over to DFA really quick. Um, we'll say it takes about two days for them to set up the farm for Egamedes while Elric's doing the, the sword making. Hyacinth's getting the brothel set up. Um, do you have any particular wants or requests for how Egamedes' little home would look? No, but she is very particular when they are doing things wrong in her eyes. Okay. And there's no rhyme or reason to what is considered right or wrong because she has absolutely no idea what a chocobo requires. The um, trainer, groomer, person, um, does take your notes into consideration, know it, mostly on the account of you have been with Egamedes the most, so they are taking it as... You know this chocobo more than they do, though they also start offering you tips in regard to um, just basic chocobo knowledge, like explaining um, the different type of geshel I mean, type of greens chocobos like, um, telling you um, if you want a certain behavior, like if you want a racer chocobo, you need them to have to do this so they can get faster. If you want a um, like a mounted chocobo for combat, you got to get them to eat this so they can build up more muscle. So that as much as you're critiquing them, they're doing their best to offer you what you might want to know moving forward, so you can have an idea what type of chocobo you want Egamedes to be. And during all of this, we'll say Egamedes is... Oops. Agamedes is very, very protective of you whenever the farmer tries to give you advice, nipping at the um, farmer's uh, ankles, being like, hey, 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 watch how you talk to my mother. Every time he nips at somebody, she gives him a cookie. 
You're Pavlog dogging this chocobo, aren't you? He's a good boy. Oh my god. <laughs> I need to know how. Over the three day period, Agamedes nips at five people individually. Not enough to be damaging, but enough to be like, hey, watch who you're talking to like that. So you've gone through five cookies. I don't know how much you have left, but. And now at the blacksmith shop, um, Elric, your sword takes three days, as we said. Clang, clang. Yep. Um, Mogzio is there to help out as much as he can while he's providing you his luck. Yeah. He's not literally lingling the whole time, though. Like, he's obviously doing, you know. Mogs yeah, stuff on the side. Uh, when you're done, how would you describe your sword now that's completed? I was trying to think of a name. <laughs> oh, I meant like first describe the type of sword. We'll get to the name in a minute. Oh, it's definitely it's another great sword. <laughs> Stick it with the great sword. Well, obviously, but like, is it like? <laughs> yeah, it's a little more ornamental, I guess, and it has a a, a raven's uh, a raven symbols like etched into the hilt. Ooh, okay. Um. Yeah, you said great sword, but are we talking like are we leaning more towards Buster's sword or just like a bigger, like a berserk? No, no, <laughs> no I'm just asking no. for like for like from my knowledge. That hunk of metal? No, no, I'm gonna, like a like a real great sword. Okay. Um, sleek but big. Yes. Once you are done, the blacksmith <clears throat> says, "Um, hey, thanks for doing it yourself. Saved me the time. Of ha- allowed me to do it my own orders and not to worry about yours." Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for letting me use your uh, facilities. <laughs> Reminder, th- these are Ronso, so they are tall or than no. you. They go, yeah, yeah no, no problem. Um, the rule always will be if you bring the materials and all that stuff, you can do it yourself as long as we're not backed up. Um, if you happen to invest in us more in the future, we can get more furnaces, more stuff going so you can get more done get things done faster, maybe get a discount for things. Um, just like so think something you can think of. I know you guys have been coming back and like, I think I saw one of your friends cleaning out the brothel. Yeah, I believe uh, they wanted to invest in, in there. Yeah. Um, hey, as long as someone's using the building, you know? <laughs> yeah. Better than, it's better than sitting empty. Did you guys happen to uh, stop by seeing Biggs and Wedge? You guys did tell them to make you that house. Uh, I kind of came straight here and started working. I was really eager. Clearly. Um, <laughs> I'm, I know you, you would have slept at some point. Um, did you sleep in the blacksmith shop? Uh, he's going to look around nervously. And... No. It's going to be a fucking roll of bluff. <laughs> uh, 13 plus 5 is 18. They believe you. <laughs> that was a horrible lie. I don't know how. Well, the, like they live. Yeah, while well, they live up top above it, but they don't they're not going to like, you know, come down and check if they close shop and they assume you left. I was eager to get my weapon done <laughs> again. They believe you, but it's like, hmm. <laughs> okay thank you yeah. just gonna back away slowly thanks again you and I'm assuming Mogs you'll leave once you're done um, what do you guys want to do now uh, it's been three days and all that so I don't know uh, I guess look for the others see what they're up to Okay. Um, if you want to find DFA DFA's at the mansion mm-hmm. and if you want to find Hyacinth Hyacinth is at the um, brothel Oh yeah, you know what? They mentioned the brothel, so might as well see if anyone's there. Okay, uh, D- me, Mogsy, are you going with Elric, or are you heading up to the mansion to see DFA? Uh, I'll head back to the mansion. Okay, we'll go up to uh, Mogsy first because I just want to see how this goes. Uh, when you get to the mansion, you do find DFA with Agamedes. We'll say you arrive just as she hands Agamedes a cookie, and you don't know why. And she's cackling. Yeah, you you showed up and there's a like an air of oh no, DFA has done something in the air. 
Or we walk up and be like, you behaving? Always. Do you... She's, she's going to launch into talking to him about everything that she's learned. But she's not going to mention that anybody taught her that. Like what, what, like what all did she learn? About the different types of greens and stuff. And then she's going to mention that Agamedes is becoming a fine young champion. For the record, at this point, Agamedes is, I will say, about a little taller than you two. He's certainly shaping up to be a champion. He has a taste for blood. Um, Maybe curb that a little bit. <laughs> hold on. Um, you think that might be a problem in the future? I, I foresee a future where that could be a problem. Hey, um, Mogzio, roll a, um, roll a perception really quick. 24. You notice just in time as Agamedes comes up behind you and tries to take your hat away from you. Like, you feel him, like, behind you, and right as his beak's about to snag the tip of the hat, you see him, and, like, like those TikTok videos of the farmer girl that just throws her hand up and the ostriches stop dead. Or the emus or whatever they are. And Agamedes is like, what? What you doing? You don't see nothing. Take a couple steps away from him. DFA is just going to coo and pet him and go, oh, what a good boy. Unfortunately, Agamedes is many things stealthy. I don't think is one of them at the moment. <laughs> He's working on it. Uh. Was there anything else the two of you wanted to do while in the mansion? Or are you just choke bowing it up? How was it coming along? Uh, the mansion itself is fully done. Because you're actually present there, Biggs and Wedge will come up to you and be like, you guys are finally back. Um, if you want a grand tour, we can give it to you. But I don't know if you want to do it with the whole group or if you just want to do it yourself, whichever you prefer. Um, I think we followed everything to your instructions. We didn't miss anything on the list you gave us. Um, yeah. Got it done faster than we thought, though. So that was cool. Um, did you guys find what you guys were looking for when you guys left town? Yes. While you answer, you notice Wedge looks very wired, like caffeine high wired, while Biggs is just very like... He looks exhausted. Ah, that's good. Good, 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 good that you found your, who you're looking for. You do what you gotta do. Um, yeah, if you want a tour, I can give you a tour. If you don't, we can uh, ski-daddle and do our own thing. And talk to you later, which, uh, whichever you prefer. I think we'll just uh, we'll take a look around ourselves so you guys can go and relax. Cool, 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 cool. You heard him, Biggs. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Grabs his friend, kind of like vibrates as he walks away. leaving you at DFA. And as they walk off, you kind of hear them go, just want to make sure, you saw the chocobo too, right? I'm not, I'm not seeing things, am I? Yes, there was a chocobo. You're not totally crazy. Yet. We are getting you to sleep, though. Sleep, sleep. Who needs sleep? I don't need sleep. You need sleep. Would you two like to go into the mansion and look around, or are you just going to hang out there while you wait for the others to come back? Probably wait for everyone else. Okay. Jump on over. Uh, Elric, you do find Hyacinth at the brothel. Issa's about to walk, step out into the, you know, outside as you show up and goes, Oh, you're back too. Good to see you. How you doing? Hyacinth put you to work yet? Cleaning, yes. Work, quotations. No, she's still not convinced. I mean, he, they haven't convinced me yet. 
Um, I heard about you just hear highest in the background. You'd still look really nice in a maid outfit. <laughs> you see, uh, he's a visibly like shudder. <laughs> anyway, I I heard about your friend Dell. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, yeah. You. If there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Oh, uh, yeah, certainly. Keep that in mind. Uh, yeah. Um. What about that uh, smarmy bastard? You get, did you uh, deal with that? Well, we walloped him pretty good, but unfortunately he got away. You'll get him. Just, uh, just keep it up. Patch with the shoulder really awkwardly and goes, uh, <laughs> I got some things to do right now, but if uh, you need me, I'll be in town, you know. Right. Welcome back. Again. You. Thank you. He walks off, leaving you two to discuss. And you see that Hyacinth has gotten how much of the brothel done, would you say? Over the um, How much time have they had? Three days. I would say that Hyacinth has gotten it to the point where everything is completely clean. Okay. Like cleaned out. And they are now in the process of uh, going through whatever furniture was left over. Mm-hmm. And seeing what needs to be reupholstered and what can just like be trashed. Um, So they're they're doing like the they're making it basically a clean slate because they don't want to start decorating anything without Dell. Dell, Because that makes them sad. Yeah. Um, We'll say that. um, Well, some of the furniture is not going to be salvageable. Like, Mm -hmm. for example, any kind of like wooden chair, stool, stuff like that. That's gone. The the wooded rotted. There's no salvaging it. Um, stuff like couches, beds, while they're damaged and could be repaired, you'll have to bring it to like Biggs Wedge or someone in town to be like doing like the refurbishing and all that. You, so th- mm-hmm. you, can, you can salvage the real furniture, anything that's wooden, again, stools, wooden chairs, tables, those will probably just have to be remade from scratch. Yeah, I just imagine Hyacinth's been using like their appraised skill or like their knowledge nobility or something um, to you- see what like. If you want, has an appeal. You could do an appraise roll. Okay. And you can determine. You can say how much uh, value was salvageable versus how much you get to spend to get um, everything fixed. Twelve. Um. What's salvageable? You determine out of that. It would be cheaper to just full on replace. Okay. The other half, you're able to just be like, no, Biggs and Wedge can come in and fix. Um, what's trashable? Knowing what you were able to appraise, you can find better with the money you guys mm-hmm. have now. Okay. Yeah, they're just kind of... Anything that looks like it still has life to it, like if there's any like brown molding on the, wall, on, like, the mm-hmm. walls and whatnot, like that kind of stuff. Like They're basically taking notes and details of all the stuff. Okay. And... Uh, but it, it's pretty empty. Yeah. It's just piles of stuff that still needs to be taken out. Um, I imagine Hyacinth's gotten Corey to help with the heavy lifting stuff. Yeah. For th- and then Corey was then sent to go check on the fighting pit situation. <laughs> when Elric shows up, Corey's actually like over the, her shoulder. Um, a uh, We'll say about like five stools just re- bundled up and just walking out with them and just being like oh. okay <laughs> and she just tosses them into a pile of other broken stuff and you're just like oh working i guess <laughs> yeah she's just like hucking all the broken stuff into a pile <laughs> what's gonna happen so i feel like that's a that's a cory thing oh yeah definitely, no, definitely. Yeah, is. i was going um, over to offer help <laughs> with anything I'm going to say that it's probably like midday. Oh, yeah. No, you guys arrived at Most midday. Likely. And because three yeah. days went by, it's about midday now. Then Hyson's probably good like and happy with what they've gotten done so far. Um, so they're probably going to see Elric on their way out as they're leaving. Okay. Um, as you suggested, mm-hmm. yeah, Corey is going to be like, um, you guys do whatever. I'm going to go check to see how the pits are. Issa said he was going to help me with that. Um, <clears throat> if you need me, you know we'll be, where we will be. 
And she goes out to find Issa to go check on the fighting pits that you guys know. Mm-hmm. You about in the fucked up place where you started this whole mess. Mm-hmm. But th- as that happened, she says that as Delric shows up and you're coming outside and see him. Did you finish your thing? Uh, I, t- I take out my weapon and show her. Yeah, it's about pretty, pretty done. What about the other one you just got? Well, I don't really feel right using my mother's sword, to be honest. Besides, I kind of like the reach of this thing. Okay. So I see you've been busy. Of course. That's what I wanted to do. Plus, whenever we, whenever Dell's mm-hmm. back, then we can go on to the next phase of actually decorating things and figure out where we want to put all the flowers. Well, I came to see if you needed help, but it looks like you guys got this done in no time. It, it, it's been three days, Elric. I mean, that's pretty fast. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of time. <laughs> Elric, because for all we know, you haven't slept much, please. Roll. I was I had like in a fever dream. <laughs> no, I was saying, roll a, um, roll mm. a constitution. Oh, boy. That's uh, 13. It's going to really hit you right now that you're like, oh, shit, three days, three days, <laughs> three days. Oh, shit. Has like, it been? yeah, it's like been three days. You're not you're not delirious, <laughs> but you're just like. Oh, fuck, it has been three days. <laughs> like your body is now like because you finally stopped working. Arms are sore. Your back is kind of like stiff because you were hunched over that whole time. <laughs> and you, were, you weren't sleeping in a bed. You were sleeping probably on the fucking corner of the room. Um, I, need, I need rest. <laughs> their stomach actually ver- makes a very loud growl that Tyson just stares at you like, excuse me. Tyson's going to hear the, the stomach growl and see the Elric's obviously dead, dead on his feet. Like, let's go home. Have you seen the manor yet? I saw it the other day. It's very nice. I actually haven't. <laughs> We're going to go get you food, and we can see the manor while we get food. Three days? Three days, Elric. We've been ashore for three days. Don't, don't worry too much about it. Just tell me, the, where did you get your mother's sword? And they're going to have this conversation <laughs> as they walk. <laughs> for sake of brevity, you guys make it through town. No one stops you. Hyacinth's able to navigate Elric, where no one's going to stop them. <laughs> and you guys get... To the manor, um, you see DFA with Agamedes and Mogzio. I will say, for the sake of it, actually relaxing for a minute. <clears throat> like, nothing it bothering him. He's actually like, no. Peace and quiet. <laughs> Somewhere outside the manor as you guys walk up. Mm-hmm. And you guys do notice Agamedes has a new pen at the side of the house. Large enough for the Chocobo to run around and actually be, like, active, not confined to a small space. Mm -hmm. You notice that DFA has begrudgingly put a little mask on him to keep him from biting people. Aw. I didn't think that was going to happen. Well, poor Agamedes. And how do you two decide to announce your return to the Mughals? Uh, I guess seeing the the pen and, and Egamedes and they're like, I guess you've been busy too. He's passed three days. Three days. You need, come on, let's go. And Hyacinth is just going to push Elric past <laughs> Magzio and DFA. And just as they walk past, Elric hasn't slept in three days. He's going to go take a nap and... Like I said, Hyacinth has probably already been here because Hyacinth sleeps like a normal person. Oh yeah, no, you, uh, for all we know, he's already had the tour. For all, all that. for all, if if you want to mm-hmm. say it this way, while DFA's been there, DFA could have seen you come to the manor every night, just mm-hmm. gone to your room and just you know slept like a normal person, and DFA just stayed in the pen with Egamedes because she's a mother now. Yeah. Um. So Hyacinth has, in fact, like stocked the kitchen. Okay. And made sure that there's like actual food here for people, and they've only seen they they've just claimed a room to be theirs. Um, when you guys um, if, like before you originally left, um, Biggs and Wedge did speak with you all about who won what room and made the rooms mm-hmm. to your like liking. 
so yeah, you, you can describe what's it, how you wanted your room to be when you get into it. Um, for example, because you're putting Elric to bed, Elric, what would you have wanted your mansion room to look like? Huh. Mm. Well, there's definitely like an armor stand and a weapon rack. Yeah. And it's mostly military like considering oh so like very spartan yeah very spartan considering his you know mother's upbringing at the time all right so so like there's not minimalistic but yeah yeah. when you height brings you in there's space for your armor place for all your swords um i won't say the bed is like just a mattress but it's very simple we'll say it's a twin no full-size bed only because, you know, it's bigs and wedges. You're not going to spare any expense. <laughs> but no, Hyacinth does put you onto the bed and is like, hey, hey, hey. Sleep. It, get your shit off and pass out. And I, you know, passes the fuck out. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to assume you're going to go back to, out, to, out to the Moogles at this point, now that you got him in uh-huh. bed. Okay. Yes. The other two, you find Hyacinth now has safely put the Elric to bed. So you assume. We hope. How how do you guys find your two rooms? Whichever one you goes first is up to you. I don't care. EFA's room would look kind of like the inside of a treehouse. Ooh. Just like all wood and everything Mm -hmm. just like a very simple little bed and it's not a very big room Mm -hmm. and she would have wanted somewhere there could have been like a window with some natural light but it's just got a very like a homey feel to it okay um we'll say because of the fact of egomedes you know and all that your window is like right above his pen so you can always look out the window and see him when you when you look out And gives you perfect opportunity to just jump out the window and go hang out with him at your leisure. God forbid you need to go use stairs like a normal person. <laughs> um, Mogsio, how would your room be? Um, I believe I asked for a very basic room. You did. Like, pretty much just what I need. Um, but I imagine that uh, with Potentially Wedge being a little bit eccentric and hyper, they uh, went ahead and made it at least really good quality stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, You notice the hardwood floors are... We'll say for your version of kicking the tires, you flick a card into the ground. The card barely embeds into the floor. This is like the good primo hardwood shit. Um... The bed, like Elric's, we said, is a full-size bed. Um, Very comfortable. They clearly knew someone who gave good mattresses. Uh, Got a nice bedside table, space for all your stuff. Um, The wardrobe is big enough for you to have many, many coats stored in there if you wish to start a collection. You have a hat rack next to the wardrobes for your headgear. And um, a nice... Um, like writing desk in the back of the room, just in case you want to set up shop and do stuff. But other than that, it's a very, uh, I just said basic and needs over wants type of room. Uh, what about Hyacinth? How is Hyacinth's room? Uh, Hyacinth's room is on the first floor. Yep. Because after... The first time of coming into this villa, they fell through the floor. It was fine. Of the second floor. It was fine. <laughs> so they do not want to have an upstairs room just in case. Uh, so they're on the first floor. And they specifically requested for to have a California king bed. Okay. Because yeah. they do not want to discriminate size. Okay. Of whoever decides to come and spend time. So, and everyone should be comfortable. And in theory, it should be big enough to where every member of the party should be able to at least sit on the bed together. 
Yeah, yeah. California King, yeah, that, that should fit everybody. Yes. Um, It'd be cozy. Mm-hmm. And so, so that's the, the main thing is it's taking up a lot of the room is the California King bed. But they have a writing desk that has a mirror on it, like a vanity, and a lounge chair couch thing, like a fainting couch, uh, as the chair for it. And all along the desk are all of the different kinds of silverware that Hyacinth has collected so far, including yeah. the rusty butcher's knife. Yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> um, there's, there's a bookshelf, and the bookshelves are filled with all of the books that were on the ship that were in Hyacinth's room. Oh, because he transferred it all over. Yes, transferred it all over. Uh, all of the books that Hyacinth's been collecting, basically. And all of the like random desk trinkets that they've been collecting too are also on these shelves. And there is a chest that is underneath the bed that they asked to be built into it almost, kind of like an underbed drawer thing. And they hit on it and it opens. Okay. And it's a collection of the different like barrel poisons from the ship. Okay. And an extra bundle of boat of arrows. And their uh their bow is also under there too. And then they have they knock another side of the bed and on the sides uh are where their da- their daggers are hidden. But the trident the trident is right next to the bed. Feel, leaning against the nightstand. I feel both very safe and very afraid of being in that room by myself. <laughs> like, I'm safe because Hyacinth will protect me, but I'm also dangerous because if I touch anything wrong, I'm dead. Yep, and then they just have, like, random bottles and containers and things everywhere and books open with notes taken and they have a bunch of, like, the the books from, like, about gardening and they have a window box that's that just has soil in it that they haven't planted anything in yet. Okay. That they're still waiting because they also, whenever they ran into Biggs and Wedge, asked them to make sure that they had another one built for Dell to put in Dell's bay window. Right. Okay. That Dell's room has because Dell specifically asked for a window. So. Um. So that they Hyacinth wanted them to have matching bay windows since they're the two of them are going to be working on the flower shop together. Okay. So, and of course a closet full of yeah. disguises and nonsense like that and clothing. So. You guys have your new home on Sion set up. Um, we'll say just for Elric's sake, Elric sleeps for a full 18 hours <laughs> to catch, to catch up the lost time. Um, and if you guys have nothing else to do that night, you guys can take a long rest and wake up the next day, or you guys can do something for the night before you head to bed. Um, I don't know if you have anything you guys want to do before bed, but I leave that to you. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be super long, long and drawn out, but I'd probably go and walk around town and See if make sure like everything's pretty uneventful. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and uh, maybe stop by the bar and ask if there's a, been any occurrences going on. Funny you say that. Um, while you're at the bar, you find Mont- Mablanc, who has made himself quite cozy in one of the corner booths. And he goes up to you and goes, hey, 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 hey. So, uh, I never got to talk to you about when uh, you had me go looking in town back at the island. Uh, well, the other island. Did you want me to give you what I found out about our smarmy little friend? Sure. Okay. Get some roll. See how much he gives you. How much he found out. Uh, Mind you, as he's talking, he slides you a stein of uh, alcohol. You want to drink it? All right. Sure. Um, yeah, I'll take a couple steps. All right. He leans in and goes, so. I was able to find out that the bastard has a place 
back on Malaf. That was it. It's down the Empire. Um, it's southeast of the coastal city where he is. Uh, it's pretty well hidden in the woods. But what I was able to find out is he doesn't have guards there. It's just him by himself. So you want to find him. That's probably where he went because the only other place you could come is here. Well, here as in like the Republic up north. But I don't think he can teleport that far from the island. That's quite a ways. So if you were looking for him, you may have to head back down there and uh, deal with him. Okay. Any news on our friend? Ah, right, right. That one, too. Yes, yes. That, mm, that was the one I was really importantly looking for. Finally, ooh. He did really that well for that one. So for that one. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find out the where, but I found out the who. You're looking at a group called the Proto Rus. Or some would say Proto Rus, depending on your accent, I guess. I don't know. Um, they're a group of bandits out of uh, out of the Empire. They uh, their ship is called the Maldwin. Putting it all in the chat. Don't, don't worry. There for the for the majority there's there's seven of them. Uh, I'd say I'd say you can handle them. You guys are pretty capable, especially with how much you handled Gale. Fuck. I guess we have no problem. Though it's the it's the what it's the makeup of them that has me nervous. We got there's a there's a uh a Namazu, a Lamia, two Naths, an Igel a Q Q? How do you say them? You, I think. Yeah, okay. I've always seen it written, I'd never heard it said. Um but here's the weird thing. And I had, I'm not kidding, I spent like most of the time you were gone trying to prove this. They're led by a, a Laporit. Which surprised me. Given the others. I think the only race that I've met out of all those that you mentioned was the, was the Namazu, so I'm just kind of like... <laughs> yep, I'm just Mog's nodding. Just, Mog's just like, yes, Strange. Th th those are things I know. <laughs> um, I will put in the bestiary for those who don't know what those races are. After, um, he's like, no, um, they're a bad bunch, but uh, I do know that they are down in the empire as well. Last I've seen, they were heading towards uh. The coast, just off the off the coast of the island, we were they weren't going far. So you probably just missed them when your friend was taken. So you wanted to head back down there and go find them. I won't stop you. I would just say make sure you are packed and ready and ready for a fight. Okay. Um, if I find any more contracts though for any other jobs, I will let you know. Um, do you have any preferences for types of jobs you would want to do? Or are you not going to be like a... Uh, we'll, be, we'll be picky once we actually have choices. Fair enough, fair enough. If I get any before you leave, I'll let you know. Remember, with buy jobs, they pay good. Good shit. So not sounds, all, not sounds all, great. Not all of them are safe, so just, you know... Big risk, big reward, you know, everything wins. And with that, he kind of like hops off the chair and heads to the bar for another drink. Leaving you to contemplate everything you just learned. I'll probably walk out before he comes back. Fair enough. 
Um, do you just head back to the manor at that point? Yeah. Is there anyone um, magically inclined? I forget exactly if there if there was in the party or in the town. Oh, in the town. Um, I believe there was a magic shop. Um, because there was the apothecary. Uh, was there something specific you were looking for? That way, I can like narrow down what you're. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I know what I'm looking for, but Mogzio. Well, uh... Yeah, like what, what? What is Mogzio looking for? I should, I should have asked. Mogzio is looking for a way to make it so, uh, the magicy types can't up and disappear. Ah, you want to try? Okay. Um. Okay. You wished for that. Okay. Um. And um, there's a magic shop that may have what you want. It is still open if you want to swing by and check now. Yeah, I'll go ahead and check. Okay. Uh, okay, the shop. Open up as you guys lost adjustion adjusting. You enter, yeah, called the Spellbound Garden. For those who are taking notes, um, it is ran by a young woman named Priscilla, and she is a She's a gnome. Oh, not what I expected. Okay. She's a gnome. Gnome named Priscilla. Um, she has fruit cut white hair and a very hypnotic voice as you enter. But she gets very distracted, though, like almost immediately as you enter. You have to get her attention again with what you uh, are looking for specifically. Uh, I'll just say like uh yeah we we met someone and they or we were fighting something and it just disappeared so trying to find something that will keep things from disappearing on us mm. maybe not visibly but like it he moved or they moved away it moved away <laughs> I'm bad at lying <laughs> uh Priscilla wears these like wide circle glasses that have the uh, magnifying glasses on one lens. She moves the magnifying glasses out of the way and you see these giant like golf ball style eyes looking at you going, <laughs> disappearing, disappearing. Um, do you mean like the, the, like the invisibility disappearing or the uh, relocating disappearing? The relocating cut. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, Tricky, 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 tricky. Um, do you want to stop them from doing it, or do you want to stop them in like they the, the, they don't get back up kind of way? You know, the, the, the we, you know, you you call a coroner type thing. Uh, stop them from doing it. <clears throat> or well, the first one. Yes, yes. Um, I might have something if I don't have it on me. I can acquire it. Um, starts like going through her shelves. You see things just flying around. Now this is where I'm asking off table. What specifically were you hoping that she would have? That way I can tell you how much it'll cost if she has it. Uh, it'd probably be something along the lines of a scroll of dimensional lock. Okay, that's what I thought you were looking for. I'm like, wait, before I give you something that you're not looking for, um. You hear a sudden, like, the squeaking of a drawer that's getting stuck, and she finally goes, nyeh, nyeh. <laughs> You hear, like, wood crack and then pulls out. <laughs> Stupid. Eggs and wedge give me shoddy stuff. Yeah, okay, okay, there we go. Uh, scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, uh, 
how much are you willing to spend in this? Depends. How much is it? Um, let's see. I could part with it for this. This is a one-time use, though. Yep. Three hundred and fifty gil. Okay. Um, she pulls worth every copper or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what gill would actually be made of because I don't think they've ever described what the material is. Worth every it's, coin. It's apparently the same as D and D. You know, yeah, it's 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 made of gold, but I don't know if it's actually like physically a gold coin. They um, have different gold. denominations. Yeah, it's yeah, like a ten gold coin and stuff like that. Yeah, um, it's like bronze, silver, the same shit. She very carefully pulls the scroll out of her like binder of sorts and hands it to you. I do have to say though, um, make sure when you use this, you you're careful. You don't want to lock the wrong person, you know. The the the, the, the teleporter types are tricksy, you know. Uh, be, be that shouldn't be a problem. Hmm. Okay, I'm not I'm not gonna be the one using it. <laughs> ah, okay. So. As long as you don't screw up and waste the scroll, I, I would hate to have just wasted your money. That won't be a problem. How much was it? 325? Roll a bluff, if that's what you actually were trying to do. Oh, I honestly didn't remember. Oh, I said 350. 350? Yeah. Uh, if you were trying sure, to... sure, why not? I'll, I'll roll something. Uh, okay, I think that's a 29, but let me check. Uh, nope, it was higher. Uh, 31. Uh, you can tell if she's very frazzled and Really not fully with and goes, hey, yes, that does sound about right. Yeah, 325, thank you. Okay. I will mark it down. Okay. Like, have a good day. If you have any other magical needs, you know where to find me. Um you if you can't find anything in here, we can try ordering it and um tell your friends. I definitely will. Mm. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah, you as well. <laughs> And as you leave, you can hear her, like, punching the drawer again, like, get back, nurse, you stupid telecos, cheap ass drawers. She's going to have a major talking to with those cats later. Oh, uh, was there anything else you wanted to do in town before heading back? Uh, no, I okay. think that was it. Okay. Uh, DFA, was there anything you want to do before you went to bed for the night? No. Okay. Um, Elric, you're comatose, we know. Um, <laughs> good acting. Um, <laughs> Hyacinth, was there anything you need to do before bed? Nope. Cool. Mogzio, you make your way back to the manor. Find, you can hear Elric sleep, snoring very loudly. <laughs> um, before you get back to your room, though, you do see that, um, Rowan... Selena, because we'll say by this time you've talked to her and she said her name. 83N and Victoria there. Rowan saying, mm, Captain, we uh, got ourselves a full compliment whenever you are ready to go. The funds to pay them have been, have been settled. No need to worry about it. And um, whenever you are ready to leave, just let us know. Fantastic. Get some rest and we'll uh, probably depart sometime tomorrow or whenever our party's ready. Very good. Uh, loving the place. Uh, screams your, your group very well. And he uh, physically turns 83N around before he even has a chance to speak and goes, See you in the morrow, Captain. Victoria bows and says, Um, Make sure you guys sleep up. Don't want you guys tired for the trip. Um, bye. And Selena goes, um, can you pass along a message to your other Moogle friend for me? Yeah, of course. Uh, the, the thing I gave her. Before we leave, I want to make sure she knows how to use it. Therefore, it won't become a problem for you guys later. Probably best we do it on the ship. Not here. Okay, I'll meet us at the ship. Uh, let's say 
after breakfast tomorrow. Sounds good. Um, yeah, just make just just make sure she brings the thing. Okay. And she just she awkwardly leaves, not sure if like you two are on good terms or not. But the, she the party when I mean, the crew is left. You have the run of the manor until you want to go to bed, and once you're asleep, if no one has anything they wish to do, that would be a good place to call it, I'd say. I spent the session actually just doing <laughs> side shit. Wow, this was actually not a terrifyingly divergent episode. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys for playing tonight. Good place to leave off. We'll pick up next time when you guys awaken and decide how you guys are going to move forward. Um, before we leave, hopefully if, if Corey's here, we'll find out what Corey's room looks like, maybe. Or that'll be just the never-ending mystery. Um, yeah, audience, thank you for stopping by and watching. This was Session 27. If you missed any part of it, it'll be up on YouTube next week. I'd like to thank the party for joining tonight. Uh, also wish, wish them a happy Thanksgiving for those who do it tomorrow. Hopefully you guys have a good day. That goes to you, the audience, as well. Be merry, eat till you're full, blah, blah, whatever you people that eat normal feed, food do on Thanksgiving. I don't know. Um, <laughs> we'll hopefully see you guys next week for the next session. Till then, though, have a lovely time zone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.